A quick note before we begin, this episode is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at theauthorinsideyou.com slash free book. Choose from over 180,000 titles. Go to theauthorinsideyou.com slash free book. You're listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Joining us today is Tracy Gardner, author of Out of the Picture, A Shepherd's Sister's Mystery. Tracy's a mom, a wife, nurse, eternal optimist, chocolate addict, music lover, and the author of the first mystery novel to be published by Hallmark Publishing. Welcome, Tracy. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, Tracy, Hallmark Publishing. How did you land that gig? <laughs> Well, I, it just, it's, it still seems kind of, um, I still kind of have to pitch myself and, and really find out if it's actually real. <laughs> uh-huh. it's just, everything happened kind of fast, but also slow, which is the publishing world. <laughs> yes, that's what we hear. <laughs> I've, I've been a writer forever, but I had never really had anything conventionally published. And I've, I was fortunate enough to to find an agent who was willing to work with me and represent me a few years ago. We really didn't, we were never able to hit like the right, I feel like so much of getting a book published is hitting the right publisher at the right time with the right material. And it, we just never found that spot. And last year, around springtime last year, I kind of just felt like I had to, I wanted to get off the merry-go-round. I will always write. It's just, I think it's kind of my therapy. But I told my agent, I I just need to step back and take a break. And, and uh, you know, maybe you can. I actually told her to take me off the website. <laughs> and, oh, really? um, because I just, yeah, I was, I was not in a great place. And I, I just felt like I was wasting her time. You know, I think I just needed to take a step back. And she told me no. <laughs> she told me she was <laughs> not going to take my my name off her site, and um, but she told me to take a couple months and just kind of relax and stop stressing about whatever we had out on submission, this and that and whatever. So um, I had a quiet couple months, and she approached me back in like May or June of last year with this crazy idea of, you know, hey, Hallmark is opening a publishing line, and why don't we send a pitch? And I just thought... Well, at first I said, that's, you know, who am I? I can't, (laughs) Um, I don't even know how that would work, but she's amazing. Her name is Fran. She's with Literary Council in New York. And she kind of walked me through what, what the expectations would be to send a proposal. And so we did. And I kind of just went into it thinking, I, what do I have to lose? I did the best that I could with coming up with something that I thought would be a good fit for Hallmark and something that I would enjoy writing. And we sent it and they liked it. Oh, that is really cool that <laughs> that she just yeah. came up with that idea and you could do that. How is it that you had an agent before you had your book ready to go? I had, I, I wrote another book. I've written a few and I'm um, trying to think it was probably back in about 2009. I had a women's fiction, a um, little bit of a mystery romance that I had written that I thought, now this is 10 years ago, I thought it was perfect and ready to be sent out to publishers and someone was going to snap it up and publish it. And, um, sure. and then I started doing some research and found out that you, you basically do need an agent to get anything looked at by a publishing house. I mean, there are, there are little windows of time when some publishing houses will accept unagented submissions, but for the most part, that's not the norm. So I spent four years, maybe five years sending out query letters to agents. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never, I don't want to count how many I sent. I don't, I, I won't ever, I don't want to know how many rejections I got. But that's I what had... we hear from a lot of people. <laughs> Most people. Yeah. yeah and that's I'm true. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. I'm always impressed by those authors that, that have a count and they're like, Oh, 87 or 522. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't. But Fran, she, she rejected my 
my manuscript and she said, you know, she rejected representing me at first. Um, and I think she's, she's always super, super professional and she's very kind. And I think at the time it was just that she said she didn't have the right person to send it out to. So she didn't think she could represent it. And that made perfect sense to me. But then I wrote another book and I, sometimes when you get rejections back, when you're in the querying the agent process, lots of times it's a form rejection or there's no no rejection at all. And she actually had given me, you know, a little bit of a personalized note. Oh, that's And nice. I think, I, yeah, it was. And I think I felt like I had, like I wouldn't be overstepping to send the, the next book that I had written out to her. So I did and she read it and she said she liked it, but still she didn't think it was the right. I tend to, these other two books that I wrote were women's fiction and they didn't fit neatly into one specific genre, which makes it harder to sure. get mm -hmm. Yeah. And like um, you said, everything's about timing also, right? Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. So more time passed. And um, I think what ended up happening is in like 2013 or so, a friend of mine ended up getting me a spot in like an online magazine writing a column every couple months. So oh, I, I did a few of those. And fun. that was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And it was, it was cool to do. And so then I felt like, hey, I have sort of a publishing credit. I'm going to send mm -hmm. this to Fran. <laughs> Great. I guess kind of maybe I badgered her over the course <laughs> of the year. <laughs> So she looked at it. She thought it was cool. And she said, you know what? We There's a, a new, I think it was like a new online publisher. So we ended up getting my other book published through the online publishing company. I think they they only put out a very small number of books and they're now not in business anymore. Oh, okay. So, but that's, so after that, she never really, I had another book after that, that we had out on submission for a little while that was a young adult. She never quit working with me. And she is very hands-on. So she was never the type of agent to just sort of sit back. There was never radio silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Yeah. Which was great. Yeah. We always had open lines of communication. So that's, I mean, I got, that's kind of how I got the agent, but there was a big gap between. Well, when good for you for on. not giving up, right? <laughs> yeah, being persistent with <laughs> finding paid, an agent. Yeah. Right. And it paid off yeah, for both of you. Long process. Yeah. Thank you. So a uh, friend comes along and says, hey, here's this opportunity from Hallmark. Let's work on something for that. And then you submit it and it gets accepted. What happens after that? Hallmark is Hallmark. They're, you know, they're, they're it's a huge company. <laughs> right. And there are, they have very, very specific criteria, which as they should, which is probably why they're so successful. So there was a, they liked the idea. So right away they said they liked the, the premise, but there was a lot of, sending their proposal back and forth and back and forth and kind of, well, you know, this doesn't quite fit and could you change this? And we really don't like this part or oh, okay. um, that took, I don't know, probably four or five months or oh, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we, we did get to the point where we had a proposal that they felt like would be a good fit. And then I, you know, they sent the contract and I started writing. So I had written the first three chapters just so that we'd have something like concrete, like, hey, you know, this person can actually write a story. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so the writing part probably took it, it really seemed fast to me. I didn't feel rushed. It, by the time I got to the point where I started writing the actual manuscript, I felt like I was friends with the characters. I knew them so well. So the book itself was easy. It oh, really okay. was. So you just yeah. had a plan. You didn't have your book written yet. No, not at all. And I, since then, I'm not sure. I think their, their criteria is constantly changing. So I'm not sure that that's, I was very lucky. I, you know, to have Fran be able to send that and to have them be able to accept a proposal, especially from somebody who didn't really have any other publishing credits to her name. I think I was just incredibly lucky in, in a lot of different ways. Well, you must then, be obviously very talented also. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, Tracy, what's your writing process like? I work full. I'm a full-time registered nurse. I do home care, which is really nice. It's I'm a visiting nurse. So I, I work pretty much Monday through Friday and some weekends, but I control my hours, okay. which is nice. I don't write every day. And it's interesting. There's, I think I've learned after all these years, I, I don't think there's a wrong writing process. I, everybody's so different. So I don't have the time to write every day, you know, work and kids and family and house and marriage and everything takes time. So I, I have one day a week off right in the middle of the week, every Wednesday that is like sacred to me. And I, I always 
90% of the time use that to write. Yeah, it's a big block of time, really. To me, it feels like a big chunk of time um, to know that I'll be able to get some words on paper once a week. And then um, I am kind of a night owl. So a lot of times after I'm done charting on my patients, I've got from like 10 until midnight or one or two. Wow, (laughs) you are a night owl. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't mind. It's I, I, ha- I don't know if you ever, well, I guess if you're a writer and you get to the point where you're not enjoying it anymore, then maybe you, you quit. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But I can understand how Wednesday is something that you're probably really looking forward to and then excited when it finally arrives, because then you can, uh, it is. Then yeah. you can write. Yeah, definitely. And I protect it, like, vigilantly. <laughs> I try really hard <laughs> not to. No plans. You know, not to, <laughs> yeah. You know, even writing time on weekends is, is a little trickier because yeah everybody's home and (laughs) so I'm thrilled that I get to write but I've never wanted it to interfere with my life too where I'm I know that there are times when I've had to choose to put time into a manuscript versus spending time with my family but I try really hard to be able to to engage, you know, when my kids do want to spend time with me, <laughs> I want to be available. <laughs> right. Obviously, working with the Hallmark Publishing Company had to be a different process than your other books. So did they take care of everything, like the editing? You didn't have to worry about that in the cover of your book. How much control did Hallmark have? They were wonderful. With the cover design, I guess the cover design came first, and they worked on that before I had finished the manuscript to turn in. Oh. But... You know, by that point with the proposal, the proposal was like a detailed five page, not like a book jacket summary, like a start to finish with all the spoilers and all the red herring. So it was kind of like a roadmap. Mm -hmm. So they knew like what was going to happen in the story. Stacey Donovan is the, she's like the editorial director. She's the head of Hallmark Publishing. And she emailed me about a month before the manuscript was due to be turned in and said, you know, this is kind of what we're thinking your little lakeside Michigan town looks like, and these are kind of what we think the houses look like. What do you think? Does this fit with what's in your head? So that was, I guess I didn't even know that they were going to ask me. Oh, Um, yeah, that's nice. Right. Yeah. And I didn't think to ask, but so she sent me a few pictures and thoughts and I I sent a couple back to her, but the vision that she had, um, like right off the bat of what she thought was in my head as I was writing was perfect. Oh, so the cover amazing. picture, I, I didn't really, I had no input. I didn't say, you know, oh, could you do this or that or whatever. They sent it to me as a finished product and I just was in love. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's great. wonderful. Just think how oh, that yeah. they knew you and knew what you were writing about, really understood what you were writing. That must have been yeah. very joyful for you. Yeah, it really was. She just got it. And I mean, I'm sure there's a whole team working behind her, um, but she was my point of contact through the whole process. And she really, she saw right into my head for <laughs> what, was, what was going on in the story and what I was imagining. So that beautiful house on yeah, the cover. It right. does look um, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, it just, just getting ready for the movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Well, you're halfway there with Hallmark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the editing process, I kind of get the feeling it's pretty much the same, you know, with with most publishers. Um, I turned in the manuscript and then I got it back for content edit. I think they're called developmental edits or content edits. So the editor that they that they hired to work with me, Rhonda Merworth, she's she. Oh, my gosh. She's just amazing. Like she has this super sharp eye for how a scene is flowing and the dialogue and what might work a little better. Um, Just kind of a big picture thing. So you go through the manuscript. It was like 330 pages or something on my, on my laptop. And there were probably, there were probably little comments on every, every couple pages. Stacy from Hallmark and Rhonda, they, they both had input with this and I had no quarrel with any of it. Because every, all their suggestions just made the story stronger. I mean, and I did. I tried to look at it like everybody involved in this. They know what they're doing. They know what's going to work. None of the suggestions were. None. Nothing really like changed the characters that I had created or the actual storyline. It was just every every suggestion just made the story stronger. And then after you turn in the content edits, then there's about another month or so until your next deadline and you have to turn in the line edits. And that's little, that's punctuation and grammar and that kind of thing. 
that was a little more tedious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't as much fun. I actually really enjoyed the revision process with the content edits. But the line edits, I mean, yeah, it was you think you read through and you think you've caught everything and it's great. <laughs> it's really <laughs> not. It's That's so what everyone says. There's always one more oops, right? And you yep, didn't see exactly. it. You read it a hundred times and you didn't see it. <laughs> yep. But then after that, I mean, they, I think Stacy wrote like the copy that you see on Amazon and on all the different websites where it's for sale. I believe I didn't write that. So oh, okay. I have, nothing to complain about is <laughs> the whole process. <laughs> it sounds great. great. Well, speaking yeah. of Amazon, I see on Amazon you have an Audible and an audio CD. Were you involved with the recording of that? Not at all. No. Nope. Um, I knew that I knew that there would be an Audible version that was in the contract, but they chose the voice actress that reads it and I they I love her. She they chose perfectly. She, I'm actually listening to it in my car right now. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> that is really neat. And I, I, well, I drive a lot for work, so oh, it's sure. great. It just puts me right back into the story. And she brings every, um, that's Carissa Vacker. She's the, the voice actress and she just brings every scene to life. She's, she's, I don't know if you've heard of yet, but she's great. You feel like you're watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful feeling. There you are driving your car and you hear it. Someone reading your book. I mean, I just can't imagine that feeling. It must be just surreal. It, that's the word. It is. It is. It's surreal. It's almost embarrassing. <laughs> this is what everyone. This, right. this is what everyone wants to hear. It is. This is what I. You know, for over ten years, this is what I had hoped for. So that's. It's just such a. It's a strange thing when something you've been. You work for something so long like that, I think I had just started to think that it was impossible. Mm -hmm. My friends and family are just, they're so supportive. They're so happy for me. They're I not sick of me talking about it yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> and what about promoting the book? The Hallmark made the little, the little graphics that you see on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. They mm -hmm. made the video. I love the, there's a, there's a short little video clip that's like 15 seconds long and then there's an actual video there's a book commercial that they played on the hallmark home and family show when they made um the recipe from the book and i'm blown away by that i, I don't, have no idea like how or who even i don't know it it's just i would i'd buy that book yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let's they, talk about that a little bit so my sister was watching the hallmark channel and she saw the episode and they were cooking your recipe. Yeah. How did that, did they ask you about, I mean, did you know that was coming up? They did. They told me that was coming up when I was writing the book. I, I had come up with the idea, the three sisters, they meet at their parents' house every Sunday for Sunday dinner. Looking back now, I think maybe that was a throwback to me growing up. We had a oh. weekly dinner with my grandmother. Oh, that's nice. And it just, they're a close knit family. The three sisters are only a couple years apart each. So it was fun. It helped me pace the storyline because I knew every three or four chapters there was going to be a Sunday dinner. And it was also a lot of fun to come up with the different, in the book, you know, it's probably a, a total of three or four sentences about whoever's turn it is to cook what they're making. But Stacy emailed me, it was sometime during the editing one of the editing phases. And she said, we really like the such and such recipe that Savannah <laughs> is going to be making. But she said, it's a little, it was a little bit too similar to another recipe in another book. So do you have another idea? And I came up with Holy Yum Baked Chicken. I, I love the name. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it sounds great. Yeah, yeah. It just sounded like a fun name. And the recipe, there's, diff there's a few different recipes out there for it, but it sounded really good. So that was the one that went in the book. And in July or August, Stacy emailed me a few different times with just updates like, hey, here's the video for your book. <laughs> oh, is, that's okay. fun. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, by the way, on September 13th, a Hallmark Home and Family show is going to make your recipe. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> I, yeah, so I had everybody setting their, their DVRs to yes. tape it. It was a lot of fun. The Author Inside You podcast is brought to you by Scribophile. You can find it at S-C-R-I-B-O-P-H-I-L-E dot com. It's a fantastic writing community where writers of all genres come together to support and critique each other's work. There are writer groups where you'll find like-minded writers, or you can even start your own writing group. 
or their forums, where you can meet other members to discuss all things writing, ask for and give help, or talk about life in general. Another great aspect of Scribophile is that you can send private messages within the web page. So say you join a writer's group and you become friends with some of the writers within the group, you can actually send private messages back and forth and not have to do it via email. So other members can learn more about you, what your style is like, and gain some fans. With all the wonderful resources on scribblefile.com, now is the time to make your book a reality. There is no reason not to start writing your book. So if you're looking for a beta reader, or some like-minded writers, check out Scribophile.com. Well, Tracy, do you have any advice for somebody who's working on a book right now? The best advice I could give, probably the best advice someone could have given me is don't stop. Don't give up. Do your research. Look into agents and God willing, you'll get an agent and then do your research on publishers. Hit all of their specific criteria for what they want to see in a query letter or submission. Don't cut any corners, but don't give up. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between self-publishing and publishing? There are pros and cons to both. Self-publishing, you obviously, you end up making probably more, you make more of the gross income or or Mm -hmm. however you want to say it of the book, obviously. But with self-publishing, I don't think I would be the right person, I was not the right person to self-publish. And I know, like I follow some authors, I know that there are very, very successful self-published authors, but I didn't have the social media presence that I needed. I think my experience with that first book five or six years ago is a little different than self-publishing because I was fortunate enough to have it. It was published by that small Mm -hmm. um, publishing company. So I didn't Luckily, I didn't have to put any of my own money up front, which was nice because I know you have to have, you know, a fairly decent amount of money to spend right off the bat and then marketing and everything. But with the small publisher, I did have a lot of input as far as like the cover and I probably had less hands-on content editing. I mean, it was basically the book that I wrote, there were very few suggestions made, just a completely different process. Okay. Like if you have the personality where you've got a big social media presence, you don't mind putting in plenty of time and maybe some of your own money into marketing efforts, then I think, and maybe if you've got like some good contacts, I think self-publishing could be great. But I, unfortunately, I wasn't set up well to do the self-publishing and actually make it work well for me. So getting the Hallmark contract was perfect. It was, it was a good thing for me. And I, everybody's different as far as, you know, Mm -hmm. what's going to work best for them. Well, obviously having the Hallmark name on your book throws you out into like this massive world (laughs) that, (laughs) you know, even with a, maybe even another traditional publishing company, you would not have this built in audience because it does seem like Hallmark fans are like, kind of like Disney fans. They're like very loyal to the company. I see that. Oh my gosh. I see that so much. I see it. You know what? I see it online on Twitter because I do try to, like anytime I post something, I'm just so grateful if people comment or say that they, that they're enjoying the book. I love that. But I see it in real life too. I have uh, one friend who is, she just loves, she and both of her sisters love Hallmark. They, they know every movie, like the back of their hands. (laughs) They love everything Hallmark. And um, so the idea that, you know, I I got to put a book out with them was just super exciting. And there is a lot of crossover. Like it seems like um, people who watch the Hallmark shows and movies are excited that now there's novelizations of movies that they've loved for years. And there's new books coming out with new stories, whether those get turned into movies or or they're just a great book. I mean, either one, it's really exciting. Right. So I love Love having the Hallmark gold crown over my head. Yes, yeah. I bet. <laughs> right there on the yeah, cover I like of the book. that. The crowns over your head. <laughs> yes, that's very nice. It is amazing because yeah, it's, you do hear about mostly women who watch are very faithful to the movies and can watch mm-hmm. them over and over again. So that is wonderful. Congratulations for getting into that brand. Thank you so much. Thank you. So how can our listeners get in touch with you? I'm online. I feel like I'm online everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) I'm probably not. I'm on um, Twitter and I have a Facebook author page. I'm on Instagram. I have a website. So if you just just type into Google, type Tracy Gardner, one of those will come up. 
and um, I have a contact form on my website and I love, I love getting comments, you know, when people reach out to me and I check, <laughs> this is probably like a total rookie author thing to do, but I actually check Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Goodreads every single day for new reviews because it's so exciting to uh, read them. That is great. Yeah. So um, before our interview, Leah and I were looking at your Facebook page and we noticed that you thanked people for leaving Amazon reviews, which is a great idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that, that they're, they're excited that, you know, they're following you on Facebook and then they see their name, you know, in your feed <laughs> and they're probably like, check that out. I left yeah. a review and there it is. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I didn't even think about it so much from the, the perspective of the, you know, I, I guess I hope when I post those that the person that wrote the review doesn't mind that I'm sharing. Yeah. With <laughs> no, I'm sure um, they're very happy. Well, they put it on. They put it on Amazon. It's not yeah. like they're just trying not tell anybody. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I love reading that, and especially you know everybody. I think with any book, and I'm I have been a reader since I was little. I, everybody has a little bit of a different takeaway. So I love reading all the comments, which is it's great. So Tracy, do you have any other books coming out with Hallmark? Yes, uh, Hallmark, just within the last couple of weeks, they did decide to take on book two in the Shepherd Sisters Mysteries. So. Wow. Congratulations. That is great Thank news. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in the middle of writing it right now. And it's it's so I haven't, you know, spent time with these characters and seven or eight months. So I'm so happy to spend time with my, my imaginary friends. again. Well, it's a good thing you're listening to the story and on the way to work. Yeah. <laughs> it does help. It reminds me of little right. things, you know, it's good. Well, Tracy, it's been great having you on our show today. You've definitely been an inspiration. And now we all know that we can contact Hallmark and maybe someday get our own book published. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They have opened some, well, I mean, and I don't know how, how long they're going to do that, but they, do have open submission periods periodically. So, you know, it, it's always good to watch the website and see what's happening. It's, you never know. Just like, like I said with me, I, <laughs> if you had asked me two years ago if this was possible, I would have just said no way. <laughs> well, congratulations. It really is a dream come true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thanks again to Tracy Gardner. And if you're interested in getting a free copy of her book on audio, you can go to the authorinsideyou.com slash free book and sign up for Audible, and you can download Out of the Picture for free. But if you're like me and like to hold the book in your hand, go to amazon.com and purchase Tracy's book. Until next time. Right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. <laughs>